Aye. Back again. Uh, right, we've moved on a bit. Uh, well, at the moment, I'm just about to start the, uh, uh, the roof. Okay. Uh, that's the roof. Uh, lots of um, lots of blue lines on it. Uh, red lines are the foldy lines. Score and fold. One millimeter sheet. Okay, so it gets folded up into a, a, a roof. These <laughs> are the tiles. Okay, right. They're kind of pre. Uh, pre-aged tiles, pre-weathered as it were, yeah. And you can see the lines of uh, green grot uh, on the on the large sheet, okay. Now, what you do with these is you actually cut out a row of tiles. Uh, I hate to think how many are on here. 10, 20, 30, 40, probably about 50. 50 rows of tiles, okay? <clears throat> so each row, single row, is cut out and stuck on that. So as in ordinary house tiling, you always start at the bottom, okay? So the first line will be there. The next one would be just above it, and in actual fact these uh, tiles that are on the sheet, which we're going to cut out, are slightly larger so they overlap, okay, just like proper tiles do. They overlap very slightly. And the important thing about uh, these tiles, because obviously you, you, you start on one side, don't you? Or yeah, it doesn't matter where you start, but you work up to the centre line, okay? So you start here, you work up, okay? Then you start there and you work up. Then after you've done the two sides or the two, whichever you want, first, doesn't really matter, does it? Then you go from here, this edge up to the pointy, turn it around, this edge up to the pointy, okay? It doesn't have to be exactly the right length, okay? Uh, because Afterwards, after we've glued them on, okay, I would suggest you glue on this side and this side first. Well, this side first, that side second, yeah, and then cut them off to their designated angles. All right, then these and these, and then cut them off to their designated angles. All right. So just glue them on, don't worry about getting the 45 degrees on the ends when you glue them on or anything like that. Glue them on and then cut 45 degrees afterwards. Right, that's... Anyway, that's, that's the next job. I haven't done that yet. They sit on these little triangular bits, okay, which will sit on top of a roof, which I'll now show you. I've actually glued down. Oh, here we go. Right, so here we go, there's the roof. See the white lines on there? One, two, three, four white lines. These will glue on like that. So they stick up and that's where the roof that we just, I just showed you will go. Okay, so this is the flat roof which the other one sits on top of. You can see we've uh, glued the roof down, okay. They're fairly easy to do. What I did there, or well, it's one millimeter, so you know it could be bendy, couldn't it? Okay, uh, you've got these. Uh, can't remember what they call them now, but they're uh, they're sort of capping, uh, yeah, sort of internal or internal walls. What you call them? Internal walls at the top here. Can't remember what they're called. Sorry, uh, I'm not going to stop the video. I'm just a Look them up. It will come to me eventually, next week probably. Uh, right, so these are glued on after the flat roofs. Okay, so what I did, natural fact, was I put glue all around the outside of the uh, 
of the flat roof and across where it touched as well so it all glued down. I then placed these, I didn't glue them, I placed these inside edges okay, and clamped them, pushed them down and clamped them with some clothes pegs so it held the roof flat all the way around. Okay? That's what I did. And then when the roof was glued, I waited for it to, to glue. Take off your clothes peg, take these off, and then glue these down properly. Uh, the back, the last bit, was the back of this tower. With a little entrance door, uh, as you can see there. Um, what else have we done? Oh, and we've actually glued the tower to the to the main building. Okay, and uh, there's still quite a bit to go. And we've got uh, what have we done on as well? I'm just put, don't forget. Well, it's, it becomes fairly obvious because this only fits one way. But this is the roadside. Okay, this is the roadside. So it's the side basically with all the windows. That's the roadside entrance. And the other side is the side which you, in actual fact, won't see because it's got the arch that covers, that goes over. And this is like the end of the inside of the booking hall. Okay, so we'll have a platform obviously in front of it, otherwise, people will come out and fall onto the train tracks, wouldn't they? So we'll have a platform here across, and then we'll have platforms that way. Okay, going towards you for the trains that come in, and obviously they stop. One hopes, right? They stop. Right, the most difficult thing so far about the build, the crux, I think, anyway, so far. <laughs> uh, apart from making sure you don't get things muddled up, uh, mixed up, and totally confused was actually the building of what they call the cupola which is this little piece of uh, kit here okay right that is an uh, interesting build I'll tell you how I did it because I didn't find it very easy initially how I thought I was going to do it didn't work out uh, so I had to think of a proper a new way of doing it different way of doing it as you can see on the inside, it's a bit like an egg box, isn't it? Okay. And you can see you've got two vertical and two horizontal bits of cardboard in there. All right. So that's on the on the uh, cut out. You, you cut those out. They're in one mil thick. There's then some bits glued between them, stiffness they call them. All right. Between them onto the base. In two mil. So that is then glued on. Right. So the whole thing, the, the structure, which is these four here plus the uh, stiffness, are all glued together and it forms a sturdy piece of uh, kit. Yeah? All right. The most difficult bit was gluing up the edges because it comes as one piece of cardboard with folds and you fold it around all right so first thing you've got to do is those two ends that come around and join you've got to glue I found that quite difficult I, I thought ah, I know what I'll do I use some super glue I, I hate the bloody stuff but I thought that'll do it wouldn't it no way no way. The problem, the problem is, my, I've got thin super glue. Perhaps it would work with thicker stuff. I, don't, I have no idea. But the thin stuff is just absorbed almost immediately into the cardboard, and all you end up with is hard cardboard, and it doesn't actually stick. No. Anyway, I was had it everywhere. I went. So. Uh, I only go three or four times at it, and it, it still didn't want to stick. So I thought, right, okay, we'll use the um, we we'll use this stuff, okay. Now I'd already each one of these sides, I'd already put a kind of a bend in because as you can see, it's bent, isn't it? okay, initially when it is vertical. 
So you have to put a pre-bend in, and it's knowing how much pre-bend to put in. If you put in too much, you don't get to glue the, uh, the middle bit. If you put in too little, it still sticks up, and you can't... Although it's only one mil sheet, still, it's got a bit of spring in it. And uh, to hold it there with your fingers, because you can't get a clamp on that, can you? I mean, how the hell can you get a clamp on that? So, right, what I did was... I put, I've uh, uh, got the four bits, okay, or the one bit in four, as it were, one, two, three, four. Folded them up, put the cut lines in, uh, folded it up, didn't glue it. I then put the pre-bend in each of the four, uh, vertical uh, dome-shaped bits, okay, put, put, put pre-bend in there. I then got hold of the, this bit in the middle, the egg box bit, all right, and I put glue up all of the faces. All right, glue up all of the faces. I then got hold of the pieces which I'd just cut out and pre-bent and wrapped them around it. All right, I put a big elastic band, a tight elastic band around the bottom. That held them all in, all right. I then put another one in which just managed to stay there without binging off halfway up. I then this is before you stick this knobbly bit on the top, okay? Before you do that. I put got hold of another elastic band tight and I wrapped it round that way. Alright. Then I got hold of another elastic band and wrapped it round that way. So the whole thing was being pulled in to that centre box section. Alright? So it was all being pulled in and hopefully glued. You know, if I left it long enough. Uh, I made certain, as best as I possibly could, that the corners were as close as they could possibly be. Okay. And when I saw that they were as close as they could be, I dribbled as as much as I could of glue, all right, of this stuff, the liquid glue. I let that dribble down the edges, okay, as far as I could, because you've got the elastic bands there, which obviously I didn't want to glue to it, did I? So, I round the, down the all four of the joins, some of that. And then, uh, well, I left it overnight. All right. And then the following morning, took the elastic bands off. Luckily, they weren't glued. I finished off putting some glue where the elastic bands were. Okay. Just left that for a while and then cut up these little edges which you can see which cover the uh, multitude of sins which you've already uh, <laughs> applied as it were okay so all the corners which were disgusting that's the thing with that uh, super glue isn't it when you put it on it wicks everywhere and uh, with paper coloured paper it wicks into the paper makes it look wet and it, it always looks wet so you get a discoloured, a discoloration of of the um, of the printed paper. Whereas I found that the the uh, maybe a thicker superglue or the stuff which I used was a lot more controllable because it it didn't wick, it didn't flow everywhere. Okay, you could wipe it off as well. Whereas superglue, you don't want to get your fingers anywhere near it. Yeah. Did that? Been there. Uh, right, and then what? Oh, you got a, a thingy on the top. Come on, with me. and then you've got some. Uh, they call them dormer windows with uh, louver shutters, louver um, louver things. Anyway, that I assume this is colour because they used to make them out of uh, material that used to um, oxidise them, like copper or something like that. You know, when you see these places, these old places. It's about a hell of a lot of copper, that. But anyway, they did used to um, build things like that occasionally out of copper. And uh, it's the verdigris on the, on the surface. I assume uh, that's why it's been coloured this kind of verdigris colour. It'll be weathered afterwards with my um, powders and this, that and the other. And this, way over we go again. Let me get hold of this. This actually sits... 
there. Okay. So we'll glue that in. Uh, there. That's what it's going to look like. Hopefully when it's finished. So we'll leave it off for the time. So I never put things like that on. Because uh, I always knock them off. So we'll leave that. Plus we've got to put some some capping around here of some sort, I think, beforehand. Looks like we ought to, anyway. Uh, I think, yeah, we've got, this roof is going to take some while. We then have all these, all the white bits. Can you see all the white bits on here? All these white lines, yeah, this white line, that white line, this white line. There's loads of white lines on the front of this and on the side. There's loads of white lines everywhere. They've all got to be covered with a kind of a... Like the strip or something, which um, I've yet to make as well. So, although we're getting there, we're not there yet. Uh, but uh, the end is in sight, uh, said the actress to the bishop. Oh, we've done some chimneys. Oh, we've got some chimneys on, yeah. There's little chimneys. Uh, let's uh, tell you what comes in handy when you're building things like that, where you've got a block. is four bits of two mil carp that. And uh, you can squeeze them together, but I mean, if you've got closed pegs like I've got, they never come together like that, don't they? They always come together kind of like that. So if you've got four blocks, you're going to make absolutely certain after you put the peg on to get you keep them together that they're still in line. And if they're not, a bit of sandpaper, eh? Never thought about sandpaper and garble before, but if it's a good bit of card. Yeah, you get your four block, and you, yeah, it makes it a nice square chimney look nice. That always makes the chimney look nice and square. A little, a little, a little. Uh, right, well, well, we're getting there, aren't we? We're getting there. Anything else? No, nothing else. So I shall. I'll love you and leave it. In a minute. Oh, well, love you and leave it. Uh, like that. I'll love you and leave you. Bye. Um, I'll see you next time. Look after yourselves. Thank you for uh, thank you for watching. I hope you didn't go to sleep. Bye.